We've been to four organizations in four different states, over 11,000 miles of travel, and now those organizations are here. They're here for a week of boot camp. We've got challenges for them. We've got fundraising, education day, auction rescues, adoption events. They're going to be extremely busy while they're here at boot camp. And it all starts now. We've been traveling around the United States to four amazing organizations, and now they're here. They're here. We've gone to their organizations. We know they're amazing. And now four organizations will have the chance of winning a $15,000 grant and pilot a full circle of life horse shelter in an effort to end horse suffering across the United States. Let's introduce the teams now. I'm Wendy, I'm president of For the Love of the Hoof, and I'm from Arizona. My name is Brandy, I'm the head trainer for the Love of the Hoof. We're so excited to be here. We're here at boot camp, and we are here to win, win it. My name is Wendy Morris, and I'm the founder and president of For the Love of the Hoof actually my passion and my desire and there, I couldn't think of anything better to do. Um, the horses is what keeps me going physically, emotionally. Our donations are far and few in between. Um, once in a while we'll get um, some person that will go ahead and give us a donation. Horse Plus is the only organization that's actually given us grants. It's hard to get volunteers out here, <laughs> so we just basically do it ourselves. We, we do want to let you know that we are going to give you the six months of mentoring. Oh, yay! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <You're so excited. laughs> That's totally good. I'm, I'm That's excited. Great. And you're still in the running for the $15,000 oh, grant. Yes. Yeah. We appreciate that. We really, really appreciate we that. Really do. My name is Phyllis with Hidden Pond Farm Equine Rescue of Brentwood, New Hampshire. My name is Cindy and I'm a board member at Hidden Pond Farm Equine Rescue in New Hampshire. We are here to win that massive $15,000 check so we can build a classroom for our kids. Uh, my name is Phyllis Elliott, and we run a horse rescue by the name of Hidden Pond Farm Equine Rescue. A lot of the people that come here are looking for some peace. The last few years where people have been struggling and then come here they, and call it their happy place or where they can find tranquility and um, evenness in their life, it becomes all that more special to me. And we all have baggage that we need to carry on. And when they come here, they get to get rid of it. Going to Tennessee, for those of you that know me personally, I never go anywhere. And I'm actually going to get off the farm to this amazing journey to boot camp and learn more about how to do my job better. 
It's all about the horse. I'm Diane from Florida, president of Wild Horse Rescue Center. I'm Alicia. I am vice president of Wild Horse Rescue Center in Florida. So we're here and we're so excited to learn how to run a rescue. And of course, we're hoping to bring home a check so that we can help even more horses in need. So with the full circle of life for horses, um, I definitely am a person that is of that cut. We are not a sale barn, we're not a selling place, and we're not flipping horses. So at Wild Horse Rescue Center, a lot of our people are volunteers that come and go, which is fantastic. They are the backbone of our center as far as with cleaning, watering, haying, things like that. So the full circle of life for the horses is something that we've been pretty much doing. There are a lot of horses here. A lot of people are trying to get rid of their horses. Um, ever since COVID, I've run into so many elderly people or people that no longer could keep their horses and just willing to give them to anybody. I'm Katie from Nevada. I'm the president of Rock and Katie Equine Redemption. We are here to do the six months of mentoring and then also hopefully we can take home a check. My name is Katie Smith. Uh, I'm the founder, president, and treasurer, basically, and day-to-day -day runner. Within about six months, we went from having 20 horses to all of a sudden we had about 45 here. My name's uh, Austin Gorham. Uh, I'm Katie's husband. I'm pretty much the schlepper, like manual labor for all of her great ideas, and I help get it done and make sure that everything works well. Uh, well, we started work on it like last August, and it was, as you can see, all sagebrush. Katie's smarter about it than I am, so I let her plan the whole thing, and I just do whatever she says. And so, 150 railroad ties later, it's almost there. Well, I can really tell, you know, if, if you did win the $15,000, that you could really use it for this facility and, and building it up. It's not easy. It's not lighthearted. It's it's it's. It's hard financially, um, and we try not to cut corners at any means. Um, we would rather starve than let our horses starve. Um, if we can get this financially stable, we can do this. No, I just wanted to call you and tell you that we are gonna get the six months of mentoring. Um, it's freaking awesome. I know, it's very exciting, and I wanted to share that with you while I had a minute. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. You guys are in for an exciting week of boot camp. We're so excited to have you here for boot camp. We have so many exciting things planned for you. We have a huge auction rescue, a large intake of rescued horses, and a whole lot more. And one of you is walking away with $15,000. And this week isn't all about fun and games. It's going to be full of challenges. And speaking of challenges, your first challenge is right behind those double doors. Woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we have a really exciting challenge for you. Keith is over at the office and he is going to read off a list of items to create a rescue box. So head over to the office and Keith will tell you what you need out of this pile. You ready for this? We have a very interesting challenge for you, and the winner of this challenge is going to get an advantage over the next week in boot camp. Ooh. For this challenge, it's assembling a rescue box. 
you might get called by law enforcement and have to be on the road within half an hour or less. So this challenge is kind of basically what would happen if you got called. Keith has a list of the needed items he will be reading off to you. And your job is to run back to that table, get those items, bring them here to the box, assemble your rescue box and bring it over to our table and we'll let you know if you're right or you're not right. Now, just like it always is, the stuff you need is never where you want it. So it's a long ways over there, but I know you guys have the strength and stamina to get it done. You're gonna to need to choose one team member from your team to participate in this challenge. Let's figure that out. <laughs> Watching a few of the other seasons, I really wasn't expecting challenges and uh, learning about them. I also was not expecting to run in the muggy heat. <laughs> I didn't expect any challenges at all. Didn't know there were challenges. No one, I don't have any sneakers. We can do it, right? We can do it. All right, yeah. good. Rescue tote list, seven sin chill, two pony halters, five buteless paste, one tube B12, four average size halters, six surgical gloves, one bag of treats, four rolls of vet wrap, nine diapers, five lead ropes, four electrolytes. I sure hope they remember all that. One, two, three. There they go. When we got to the table, everybody just started grabbing a bunch of stuff, you know, throwing in items that we really didn't need, but I grabbed one of each thing that I knew we didn't need, but I wanted to make sure. As I was going through, as soon as I got there, I was thinking, and then I just kind of went blank, like, what do you need? All right, we got the first contestant coming back. Go. Are you wanting to check it now? Yeah. Okay. I need keys. <laughs> it's not, it's not correct. No, I'm sorry. Where's Keith at? I read the list again, okay. So I was looking through my box and I, I just don't remember all the things and Keith is nowhere to be found. <laughs> They really look energetic. They do, they, oh, oh, Brandy! I, I was running and next thing you know, my foot kind of, my ankle went out on me and I kind of went rolling, but I got back up and kept going. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, it's not right. Oh, Keith, can you read me the list, please? Seven cent chill, two pony halters, five viewless paste, one tube of B12, four average size halters, six surgical gloves, one bag of treats, four rolls of vet wrap, nine diapers, five lead ropes, four electrolytes. I'm sorry, not quite right, but these do not belong in your rescue box at all. I'm sorry, but your numbers aren't quite right. I was super close to getting my box done and I'd look around and everybody's grabbing way too much. So then all of a sudden I look at my box and I'm missing a few items. It's really coming down to Alicia and KT. They're neck and neck. I thought I should have got a pen and paper to write it down and think outside the box. I'm sorry, it's not right, but these do not belong in the box at all. I need him to come back. It'll be like 14 times for yes. me. I'm sorry, you don't have enough stuff. This is really hard for them. We might be here all day. Seven cent chill, 
two pony halters, five buteless paste, one tuba B12, four average size halters, six surgical gloves, one bag of treats, four rolls of vet wrap, nine diapers, five lead ropes, four electrolytes. I'll put them all back. This does not belong in your rescue box. I, I just can't find any B12. There's no B12s on the table. There's no way I'm letting KT beat me. We're sorry, your number is not correct. I really hope they can get this figured out. This is definitely a challenge. And I'm missing. What are you missing? Stuff. One B12. Uh -huh. uh, it's supposed to be four but four electrolyte, and five butylus. How many diapers does she have in there? There is nine now. Congratulations. Yeah! All right. But that doesn't mean you stop now. The rescue must go on. Rescue must go on. Every person is getting an advantage depending on the level that you're at when you win. We finally have a winner. Yay! I think I have it this time and I pray to God that I'm done with running back and forth. Congratulations. Second place! <laughs> I'm happy that I am done with the challenge. I got second place, so I'm glad it's over. We have two winners so far, and that's pretty awesome. Um, it's hard, it's not an easy challenge, but the rescue life is never easy, it's full of challenges. Rescue life is one of the most challenging lives uh, you can ask for, and uh, this challenge is definitely a little taste of it. If you can tell us what you're missing because somebody else has too much, you're good to go. I need six halters, I don't have six. I need five lead ropes, I don't have five. The rest is a little murky. I can't do this. This is too hard for me. It's frustrated and the halters get in the way and then you can't find out what you have and then this is color is different than that color. Every time you think you've got all the right numbers, you don't have the right numbers. You get too much of everything, not enough of anything. I'm not a fan. You got it. What I was thinking, like with the gloves, I was thinking six pairs of gloves and not six gloves. Rescue life can be extremely challenging and that's kind of what this challenge is teaching them is sometimes it's not easy and sometimes the answer is right in front of you you just don't see it. It's a moth. Look at that cute little moth. Tennessee. We're so happy to finally be here. This was one heck of a drive. We spent 24 hours in the truck and we brought eight of our own awesome horses out to get adopted, hopefully at this adoption event this weekend. I'm really hoping we meet some awesome people. We do some great networking and I get to learn all about these new rescues. You know, we're really thankful to Horse Plus for having us out again. We're over 70 horses that we've got available right now. So getting eight out, I mean, that's, that's a huge help for us. So we're just happy to be back. Alicia with Wild Horse Rescue Center won the Rescue Box Challenge, and that is amazing. Great, great job. And everyone that participated, we told you all that you would be getting kind of an advantage. So not only are you going to have the six months of mentoring, you are going to have a special mentor for just this week of boot camp that belongs to just your organization. And we'd like to introduce you to the two other mentors. All right, come on out. We have Carrie here with Colorado Horse Rescue Network and she was the winner of season two. She has been through the process. She is gonna be a very valuable mentor to have on your team. 
And then we also have Angela, who is our shelter manager. And she picks my brain constantly. She manages this, this, this organization here, which if you walk around, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing what's all here and under her belt. Then you also have Jason or, or myself. So you have some options, but the winner of the last challenge gets to choose first. So decide among yourselves and your team, who do you want to be your mentor for this week? So have you made your decision? We have. So go ahead. Angelo. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Oh yes, we need help with managing stuff. I was so shocked that I was the first one chosen. I, I did not expect that. I mean, Tawny and Jason have like all of the knowledge and they've been at this all these years and I'm fairly new as shelter manager, so being chosen first was a big shock for me. And she thought she was gonna get picked last. <laughs> I don't know, she probably would have been my pick too. <laughs> <laughs> KT with Rockin' KT from Nevada was the second winner, so make your choice. <laughs> now who'd you decide? So I'm gonna pick Carrie. <laughs> Thank you so much. I chose Carrie as my mentor for this week because I just felt like she had a lot of energy and a lot of outgoingness that I could connect with and I feel like she connects with her followers really good because of her energy and so just mentally I felt like um, I could learn a lot from her and do good things with her. I was super happy to get chosen second. I thought it was pretty cool that I got picked not just over Jason but over Tawny. I mean hey that makes me feel pretty special. But uh, no, I agree. I think that we've, we've got a similar um, energy level. Um, we're both kind of from the same area, you know, in the country. So that's kind of cool, but fairly similar in the type of situations we see and the types of horses we see and stuff like that. So I think that we're gonna be super compatible and I think we're gonna share a lot of information. And I, I think this should be a, you know, pretty successful partnership as far as telling you about all the cool stuff that we've learned while we were here. And we've had a pretty positive relationship with Horse Plus at this point, and we learned an awful lot, and I think going forward, sharing anything that we've learned with you would be awesome, and seeing you guys grow too, I think that would be great. Phyllis with Hidden Pond Farm Equine Rescue was the third winner. So who are you gonna choose? No brainer, Tawny. Aww. Oh. Right. You were my yeah. We chose Tawny because I love her energy. This is after all her baby and she's done all of it. The adoptions, the intakes, the dealing with people. And I think that she is the whole encyclopedia and we have a lot to learn. And I look forward to everything that she can possibly cram into our brains. I'm really happy that Hidden Pond Farm Equine Rescue chose me as their mentor for this week. Obviously through the whole mentorship, I'm mentoring lots of different organizations, but for this week, I'm gonna be specifically their mentor and I'm really excited about that. They do a lot of really great work and I love their kids program and I love kids, so I, I'm happy about this. I think they can do uh, a lot of amazing things uh, for horses, so I'm really, really happy to be their mentor. Well, guys. <laughs> All right, my favorite group in Arizona. <laughs> we, we work well together. <laughs> We're super excited to have Jason as our personal mentor um, this whole week. And the reason why is because we get to learn all this wonderful filming. We're so excited about that. Angela got picked first. I didn't see that coming. Well, we saved the best for last. I'm super excited to be mentoring Arizona. I was a little concerned about the organization when we first went there, but once we spent a few days with them, it's like, yeah, I think I can work with these guys. I think I can teach them a lot. So I am excited to be mentoring them this week on a personal level, and I can't wait to see what all I can teach them. Okay, now that you've all chosen your mentors, we're ready to start the next challenge, and it's gonna be a little exciting. Head over to this barn, and you're gonna find out what you're gonna be doing next. Like surprises. <laughs> oh boy. So now we just saw the big pile of hay and I have to go first and they're saying there's little needles in a haystack. We're gonna be here all day. 
The hay pile is literally three round bales, which is going to be extremely miserable to dig through and I can only imagine how dusty and dirty we're gonna be after this. Well, that's kind of what fundraising seems like sometimes. We're out there trying to get money for horses and it feels like it's impossible to get. And during this uh, time at boot camp, we are gonna go over fundraising in depth. But this is gonna be kind of like fundraising because there are 20 needles in here and attached to the needles is a tag and the tag has an amount of money on it. The tags represent money that you're gonna be using during boot camp at some point. Unfortunately, you can't take the money home to your organization and use it, but I just can't tell you what you're gonna be using it for at this point. You're all actually literally going to be looking for a needle in a haystack because that's what fundraising really feels like. <laughs> I think the hay challenge is going to be exceptionally hard and it's gonna be very, very good for, to see how everybody works together. So the first organization to win five is done. As soon as you find five tags, you're done. The first time you find a tag, you get to call your teammate in. Now, KT, I know you don't have a partner here. So Addison, come on over. And this hay pile behind me is $10,000. $10,000 hidden in this hay pile that you're gonna use at some point during boot camp. And you guys are gonna find it all starting now. Go, 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 Where's the needle at? I got the money. <laughs> oh, there it is. They're not very big. <laughs> $150 for Florida. Come on, New Hampshire, we got this. My bucket's still empty. I'm waiting for Arizona to find a needle in the haystack. You got it, come on. is working so hard back there. They're just working hard. So far, only two needles have been found. There's 18 needles left in there. That's crazy. We've only found two out of 18. And look at this pile of hay is everywhere. It's 30 bucks. Oh, wow. Yay, at least Where's our girl? Here she right here. is. Awesome job, guys. So I know Arizona's gonna find something, but so far it's empty and I've been waiting here for a long time. I really hope that they're able to find it. Uh, Wendy had to step out actually. She couldn't take all the dust in her lungs. Now we've got her partner working. And we've got 600 for Nevada, go KT. <laughs> Addison, make sure you find the big one, okay? I know there's a needle in here that's got a really nice payday attached to it. I'm playing here. <laughs> probably on the ground. Oh no! Five dollars. You've got this. The next one's gonna be big. I hope so. So they have hundred and eighty-five dollars. They've got three tags. The last one they got was $5, and the one before that was 30. So, Arizona finally has $45. the love of the hoof actually has hay fever so she's not able to participate so Keith is stepping in to be the partner for love of the hoof is this not like 25? Woo! Woo! Another one. 
So we've got a 450 and a 45. Almost a $500 so far. Yay! We got 750 and 250. I got one. Yay! 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 Only two more. We're almost there. They only have to get two more and they're done. We're about halfway done and Arizona has $495, but there's 11 tags left and there's some big ones in there. This is a challenge, but fundraising is also a challenge. And that's what this is showing is you have to work hard, telling your story, putting out the need in order to raise funds for your organization. So this is a, uh, a real reality of how hard fundraising can be. So far, New Hampshire is doing great. We have over $1,000. 40! 40! Woo! Yay! You go? I'm on it. You got it? You guys find one? 40. Good job. Woo! 640. I'm gonna get the big numbers. From what I've heard, there's one in there that everybody's gonna want. <laughs> I'm hot and sweaty and I'm not even moving. Hey, I can only imagine how they're feeling today. Arizona's uh, pulling ahead with the number of tags they have, but they only have $1,140. So if they don't find a real big one, they're gonna end up losing in the end. That's the way fundraising is. Sometimes you get a lot of little donations, but you don't get a big one, so you don't make as much as if you got a big one. So this is a great simulation of how fundraising can go. And it doesn't matter this organization's better, this organization's bigger, smaller. Every organization out there can fundraise and push, and it just takes that one special person coming along to help in a significant way, or a lot of people coming on with little donations that can help in a huge way together. You're getting there. We're up to three. 300. Woo! Woo! 100. 300. Make it the big one. Find the big one. One more. I thought I was going to be picked last. I was in shock. Well, but anybody that knows anything about rescue knows that the one that's the boots on the ground, that's the one that you really want to talk to. That's ah. one more and you're done. They have found four and they only need one more and they're done. Five hundred! Woo! Yay! Add them up. All right, six hundred. That's eleven hundred. Eleven hundred forty. Thirteen hundred forty and $1,640. I'm pretty proud that we've got such an awesome team, you know? I'm pretty proud that my kiddo had to go in and help out too. She's a pretty good, uh, she's a pretty good hand when it comes to throwing hay around, that's for sure. <laughs> we just finished our five tags and I'm very dirty. I have hay in everywhere it shouldn't be and I feel pretty good that I'm done digging in the hay, that's for sure. <laughs> ideal is go through most of it, get it all in the pile for the big stuff and at least the little stuff. Then I know I've been through that and then if I can't find it and go back through that and know it's somewhere in that pile. Woo! One more guys, one more. Got one more. And then been nice and just split it all. See that's how we yes. could have won. All of us said listen here, we're working as a team. Yes. We're all going to find it and then we're going to split it. Here's a needle sitting in the hay right here on top and nobody sees it yet. 
My team only needs one more needle, so. There's a needle literally right on top of the haystack, and Diane accidentally flooped the hay over it and then threw it the other direction. It's really hard not to say anything, so I feel really bad for her. Like, uh, how much money is We're left in that? We're going to out here in a second. There's three more, guys. Three more. I am so glad that our fundraising goes way better than looking for these needles. <laughs> it's reality. It is like what fundraising would be. It is a needle in a haystack. You work really, really hard to try to meet your goals. Hard work, dedication, you'll succeed. You know, I can't go as fast as when I first started, but just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. We're just down to one more to find. One more of the little ones, of course. That's all we would like to find. Yeah, you know, we found all the little ones we were fortunate to find. I'm sure there's another $5 one in here somewhere. Yeah, we'll get it. Yes. It's been frustrating. <laughs> Even when you find something and then it's like $5. Yes. We did not find any big prizes. No. We're going to be on a very small budget this year right now. <laughs> Oh, wow! Yeah, 5,000! Put that one in there before you lose it. Woo! I found one! Yay! <laughs> I'm done! I'm so excited New Hampshire got all five of their needles out of the haystack. They've gotten a total of $2,125 that they'll be using at some point during boot camp. I didn't think I was ever going to find anything, ever. Yay! <laughs> totally excited, <laughs> ecstatic, relaxed, content. I'm praising God that we have completed the task. Oh, Woo! Woo! 350! <laughs> Talk about a needle in the haystack. Look at that hay. Yeah. $80. We are super proud of you all. You plowed through that hay pile. Took a minute, but it was worth it in the end because you raised $10,000. So let's go through the organizations and see how much each organization got. Wild Horse Rescue has Five hundred and sixty dollars. <laughs> For the love of the hoof, got five thousand two hundred and seventy. Rock and KT got one thousand six hundred and forty. Hidden right. Pond Farm Equine Rescue got two thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars. So when you're fundraising, it can be frustrating because you can see another organization and you're like, oh man, they're getting all this money, how do we get it? And it's really kind of hit and miss, it's how you're telling your story. Over the next coming days in boot camp, we're going to be going over that and how to tell your story so you can reach donors better because fundraising is one of the hardest struggles that nonprofits face. There is something special with this money though, because we did say that you're gonna be able to use it at some point during boot camp. You're not gonna use it at your own organization. So you wanna tell them what they get to use this money for. Absolutely, so you know on Tuesday we're going to an auction and this money represents the money you will have to save horses at Woo! the auction. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> that is great. Yay. So there are some things that you can do. Now when you go to an auction, if there's another organization there, what's the best thing to do? Are you going to be bidding against that organization or? No. Best thing is to work together. She might only be able to get one horse at auction for the slaughter price, but if you all work together, much can be accomplished. So it's up to you. Instead of just being able to rescue one or however, and then for everybody, if we put it all together, we'll all be able to rescue them all. Well, if you want, dump them all together. Let's do like it. That. Yeah. Definitely. horses at the upcoming auction.
I know you guys are hot and tired and sweaty and these challenges challenged you physically and mentally. So why don't you guys head back to the Airbnb and we'll see you bright and early for the adoption event. Wow, that was a day, wasn't it? Oh boy, was it. Wow. It was you amazing. You know, we learned so much. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> bit. <laughs> we did it. it was a lot of fun. I like the experience. It is true. You know, you got to know everything to get before you go rescue. And then it is like a needle. Rescuing is like a needle in a haystack fundraising. My experience was great. And you know, unfortunately, I was unable to participate in the last uh, challenge. But, you know, just being able to watch everybody and watch everybody be able to work together as a team was really fantastic for me. I thought that was really good. Today was rough, sweated a lot. I'm covered in head to toe with hay. Um, but we got to learn a lot about teamwork and working with other rescues and um, it was kind of competitive, but not competitive. And at the end of the day, we still get to use $10,000 at the auction all together. So it's good. Digging around in the hay and sweating and getting it all stuck to me was pretty obnoxious, but it is what we do with our horses, right? <laughs> Man, I'm exhausted. <laughs> what a day that was. That was a lot of fun oh, today. Definitely not what I expected. I, know. I knew it was boot camp, and boot camp means tough, right? <laughs> right. But wow. Yeah, agreed. Totally over yeah. the charts. Tired. Yeah. Today, you know, with the hay thing, I mean, that was oh, tough by all means. Tough. But when we combined the money, which was a great idea yes. there at the end, man, if we would have thought about that from the beginning. We could have all we could, worked together and found it And way pulled sooner. it out, you know, as a team. I bet it wouldn't have taken us half the time because that was tough after. And I was even, I even threw one and threw hay on it. And then yeah. I had to, <laughs> uh, then I found it again. And I yeah. was like, oh my gosh, because um, some of those tags were hard to see, but. That was um, that was a lot of work, but you know yeah. what? We put in long hours, just like all these other rescues. It's yeah. a lot of work, but we made it. So that was a fun challenge. It was, it really was. Makes people think about team working and yes. effort together. We're not gonna go anywhere, right? Get no. showers. Get showers, eat some dinner and go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna play a game of foosball. Yes, we're gonna play Because I bought new foosball, foosball balls for the <laughs> table. So I'm getting me a cup of coffee, we'll get showers, sit down and have our little uh, dinner yep. and hit the sack early. Yep, sounds good. There we go. I am so proud of these organizations. They just dove into this hay pile. And Wendy started having some, some like asthma and she yeah. had to step out. So Keith went in for her. It was just amazing to watch their dedication. They had no idea even why they were looking for these these little needles with the tags attached, but they wanted to get them. First five, and they were out, you know, they got to get out as soon as they found five. And a couple of them found them pretty quick and they yeah. went out. And they all raised different amounts because fundraising is one of the hardest things that organizations do. And this was kind of a great example and challenge of, you know, how hard it is to fundraise and how you have to stick with it and follow the philosophies behind fundraising. I fell in love with them when we went to their respective organizations earlier this year. It felt like we were going from the north to the south. There was hot, there was cold. There was we snow, blizzards, palm trees and mustangs. I mean, it's amazing. And we fell in love with each organization. And we went there and we're like, well, maybe, maybe this one won't even make the cut to come to our facility. And the more time we spent with them, we're like, wow, how are we even gonna choose who gets the $15,000? They've had quite the journey getting here. We went to them, we chose them to be one of the mentored organizations. We'd like to take you back and show you a little bit of that journey.